talk about the event types and the way to tag things. Tags will be a different video, but um, we're going to talk about event types. Please refer to these, these videos I'm putting together about working with data models. They go together in a playlist. I highly recommend you watch the whole playlist. I will call out the important videos down below in the description below. Do not try to treat this video as a standalone. I mean, it's got its value there, and it's they can stand alone, but it's really important that you put all the pieces together. This is about making data models work. And so the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to go back to our sim setup which, not sim setups, into our edit objects. We're into our data model of network traffic. If you've been watching the playlist, I've shown multiple times how to get in here, but you're gonna go into settings, data model, and then pick your data model, in our case, network traffic. In the previous video about this macro, we showed how to set the restrictions so that it would search the right indexes. Now we need to see, get these tags. This this data model is going to work on the indexes you define in this macro, and it's going to look for data that has been tagged as network and communicate. That's what it needs. It's only going to search that data to make its data model. So if we come back to our little Splunk here, and I go, and I've got this really cool set of data here, lane training, uh, source type equals, these are my con logs, right, source type correctly. And if I do that, I pull back this data. I'm running it nice for both modes, so I get back all the fields. Yep, this is definitely network traffic. Let's go down here. It says it needs a tag. I don't see the tag field here. This data isn't tagged. So how do we tag data? Well, hands down, the easiest way to tag things is to use event types. Event types are a very simple way of creating a condition and applying something to it. So for example, I'm gonna put this in the lame training app. I'm going to tag all of this data as, what do I need to tag it as? Network and communicate traffic. That's what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to make a network communicate data. And what is that data? What data should be tagged with network and communicate? Well, the simple answer is everything that meets this criteria comes from the lame training index and the lame con. If I put that there, that will work. Now, to be completely fair, because of the restricting on the indexes here, if you don't put in index equals lame training, that is okay. It's not going to be the end of the world if you don't put that in there. But I recommend, it's a good practice, go ahead and put it in there. And what were the tags? Network and communicate. What does it say here? Put a comma separated list of tags. So if I go network and communicate, that will tag it. Now I'm gonna show these colors, I'm gonna do something with them because I'm gonna come back and do some other cool stuff. So I'm gonna actually put a color here. I'm gonna say I want everything that is network and communicated, uh, communicate tags, or that fits this criteria, that's one of the same. I'm gonna give it a priority of five. Recognize what's gonna happen is it's gonna look at everything that's been tagged and whatever holds the highest priority coming back to this because we'll see this as a gotcha to seeing that not do what you think it's going to do. Whatever holds the highest will display its color. So I'm going to put it as, I do not recommend putting it as a one unless you absolutely, this is the most important data you could possibly have. And so I'm going to put it as a five and this color we're going to come back to in a second. But just know I'm going to put some colors here and I'm going to put a priority of five. I definitely didn't want the priority of one or nothing could show up as a higher priority. So I hit save, and like all knowledge objects, next thing we need to do is it's been shared to me personally. I need to make this available to others. And so I'm gonna make sure that it's at least available in my app. And so we'll re give read write access to everyone in the app. And so as long as I'm searching, we wanna make sure what app am I in? I'm in the lame training, I can see that right here, sorry, right there or I can, I can drop down, I can see the check mark says I'm in lame. So I'm good, I, I can use that here. You do, I'm kind of stalling intentionally because when you create a knowledge object, it does take a minute to permeate through your uh, logs and make sure that it actually remembers to do that, logs that puts it up into memory and stuff like that. So if I do this, let's do a refresh on this page just to make sure 
And if I come in and I run these 100 events, if I come down, okay, so I didn't actually run it yet. This is just refresh. So let's run this query. And we should see, there's a tag. They've all been, ta they've been tagged communicate and network. And remember I set a color. If it meets the conditions I said, it's going to turn this little bar orange. That's kind of cool. It visually will help make things a lot easier. So for example, if I take out source type blame con, now I'm looking across everything. Oh, this one's not orange. Why? Because it's a DNS query. It's, it's not a con log. This one here, this is another DNS. This is web traffic. And so I can quickly visually see the stuff based off these colors. That can actually be really quite helpful. We're going to come back to these colors in a minute, but right now we're focusing on this data model. So now I have done, my, my stuff is tagged, and it's using this index. So in theory, if I take this query right here, and I put it in the search, I should get back data. And that's the first thing I recommend. Run the query here. I should not have run it in verbose mode, but we, we can see that I definitely get traffic back. So that's good. Um, so let's go ahead and pivot here. Do I, if I pivot in my data model, do I get data? I'm gonna choose the all traffic data set. And immediately let's close this down to say the last 60 minutes. Give it a minute to load. I mean, it's telling me right now it's it's matching events. So it may take a minute to update. There we go. Boom. Now it catches up. So I've got data. Um, do I have all the fields that I want? Do I know that I've got, uh, do my field names match up down here? That may need to be fixed. So I may not have the fields I want, but at least the data is being searched. And if the fields match, we'll get them back and we can use them in our data model. So that is as simple as it gets to setting a uh, event type for a data model. Now let's talk the reasons we'd want to use data mo uh, event types outside of just data models. Have you ever gone to a wrote, written a whole bunch of dashboards and you set up index equals blah, source type equals da 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 da, and then you do this, and then down the road someone chooses to change the index that you're storing stuff in. You have to now go back and change the index for every dashboard. I'm going to tell you, as someone who has used uh, Bro, Zeek, Corelight. I've seen the data is relatively the same, but they've changed the name of the index depending on, oh, it was bro. Oh, now, nope, now it's changed to Zeek, so let's change the index to Zeek. Oh, nope, nope, now we're using the uh, paid version of Corelight. And yet the dashboards, their principles, the fields they're looking at is all basically the same, but it, it won't work because you changed the index. So a simple, easy way to fix that is, I'm gonna make a new event type. I'm gonna call it, um, network traffic index, and I'm going to go uh, index equals core light. Actually, in my case, I'm going to do uh, lame training. And I won't put any tags in here, no priorities, move this priority to the lowest so it doesn't overwrite anything else, and I'm going to hit save. then I might want to do something like, so now when I write a query, instead of writing index equals bro on all of those different things, I can just write event type equals network, what do we call that? Network, network traffic index. And so I can write this in its place. Maybe I use this query uh, source type equals blah. And I write this query a hundred times in a hundred different dashboards. And all of a sudden someone decides to make the choice, change the index. Or maybe you want to publish this on Splunk, Splunk base and someone else is going to change the index. Maybe they're not going to use the index you're going to use. All they have to do is come into settings, change the index here, 
and no matter what index they're using, it's it works. Um, another thing you can do: what if you have a you want to deal with certain things like um, network traffic, DNS? I can actually do and source type equals. Something like that. Now, if you you don't you you want to call it that index, but I'm going to call it an index that calls an event type. And so even my event types will update. So I could have a whole bunch of event types pointing to con logs, uh, DNS logs, HTTP logs, and I only have to change that other that previous event type, and everything else just gets fixed. So I'm going to put this down as the 10 lowest make it sure and we hit save so if you want to visually see this I have this source type this event type and this event type can both be changed by me just making the change right here in this index and now all of a sudden I don't have to replace all these dashboards I don't have to change recode things that gets really frustrating and so event types are massive another cool thing about event types let's just say we're looking at we're going to go hand jam this. We're going to go index equals lame training, source type equals lame con. We look at this and we see something of interest. I'm looking at direction is internal. Maybe I want to see stuff where the direction is outbound. Something's piqued my interest about outbound traffic and this IP address. Maybe for some, this IP address is, is a, a system of interest and um, you don't want it talking out. So if I go and I say dest IP equals, oops, sorry, uh, grab that IP address 10.0.0.18. And direction equals outbound. Just put it in quotes. Just to, we don't need this and here. If we're going to put it, we put it up uppercase, but it's not necessary. Um, if I go something like this, okay, I got my query written. Now I'm going to make that an event type. So I'm going to come in here, new event type. Suspe uh, system of interest talking outbound. I'll put that right there and I'm going to call it suspicious. We're going to come back to tags in the next video where we can use these tags to actually hunt stuff down. Um, I'm going to now make this a highest priority uh, maybe we're going to put it too. Maybe there might be something that's even more priority, but we're going to go, we're going to put this as a bright old yellow. And remember the other one was set as five. So we should be getting the lame con logs should be showing up as orange. The ones that meet this criteria should be showing up as yellow. And let's go make sure we give it the proper permissions. Just Oops, that was already been given. So we want to grab the right one. It helps. In systems of interest. Let's make that this app only. And then we should be done. We can come over here. We can erase this piece. And we got orange logs. Oh, there's my yellow log. So I don't even have to be reading this stuff over on the right-hand side. My eye will just notice any yellow traffic. So as we just scroll along, oh, look at that. And so that is a really useful feature uh, to be able to make some of your data pop with your eye. Now, one of the things to pay attention to, I've mentioned priorities. You set those priorities. What happens is you start downloading other TAs and other things. People will set event types. 
and by default, Splunk has one as the number. And guess what will we'll then take priority? The highest, the highest one. So let's, what happens when your event types aren't quite doing what you expect them to do? Like you put a color on there and the color isn't flashing. Well, the easiest way to troubleshoot this is first, let's look at the tags. Communicate, network, and suspicious. I know what those tags are. I made them, I'm good with that. Okay, that's fine. I don't see anything here that's weird. Let's go look at event types. Network traffic, communicate data. Yeah, I know what that is. Network traffic index. Yep, I made that here. System interest talking outbound. Yep, I made that. NICs, all logs. Why are there NICs, all logs? So I went and copied and pasted this, copied it. I have it over here so you don't have to spend the time finding it. And all of a sudden I see that my Splunk TA for NICs has this little thing inside. And it, I have changed it. But when I went in, guess what it had as its priority? Highest. If I hit this and put save, that, by default, people have one is often written there. And so what I'm finding is, now when I go rerun this query, all of my colors disappeared. The reason they disappeared is because this little TA decided it was not written in the way I would write it, and it chose to put a high priority on there and my, my data fit under one of these categories because the data came in from a dot log. And so what I did is just lowered its, I put its priority down, I saved it. I could get rid of the event type, I could lower its priority, whatever the case may be. That's why I don't recommend putting priorities at really high levels. Uh, by default, you should put them as 10. If you don't really want the thing to flag a color, put the priority as a 10. Anyway, I've done that and now I can rerun this query and I have my colors back. I hope that was helpful. Um, this is event types. The, the, there are a lot of things you can do with event types. I hope this uh, helps open up some of your ide some ideas in your mind. It's definitely necessary for data models, but it's also helpful for finding data, classifying data, and making your searches uh, more redundant, repetitive. Uh, it, makes it, it makes troubleshooting and code maintenance so much easier if you will. When you're going to share uh, code, such as in a dashboard, use event types. Don't use, uh, don't code things out like this. Otherwise, if you ever have a change or you want to share it, someone's got to use the exact same uh, naming scheme as you or it won't work. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you like this uh, video, please do me a favor and hit that like button. Uh, I would love it if you'd subscribe. If you find this information useful, you'll get uh, all the latest videos I've been rolling out. Again, a reminder, please follow the, uh, the uh, watch all the videos to deal with data models. This video is not really great by itself. It's a good use of video event types, but it has a larger purpose, but I don't want a really, really long video. Um, I hope this helps you. You're becoming a, uh, moving from being a Splunk, uh, from being a lame analyst and helps you become a Splunk ninja.